And we are live. Hello, Inhumanoids. Hello, hello. Good to see hello. everyone tonight. Welcome to the show. Welcome to another Inhumanoids Live. I'm your host, Bart Nunley. Right here beside me, your co-host, as always, my beautiful wife, Letitia. Hi, guys. We're also being rejoined by two more lovely blondes tonight, Krista and Hollywood. Hello, girls from Blondes and Booze. Welcome back. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's good, good to be back. I've been going to, I've been having a, you know, some meetings and stuff going on on Wednesday night, so this is nice. Yeah, and it's it's yeah. like I have to get up and go to work at 2.30 in the morning, so actually oh, yeah. today I got a nap, so I'll stay here as long as I can tonight. <laughs> well, totally well, understand. Yeah, we're, uh, we're glad to have you, Hollywood, and I got to get up at 4.30 myself, so you got me beat. <laughs> but yeah, we got a great show tonight. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was down at a meet and greet, uh, Brother Mark Plowboy Green's meet and greet down at the LBL and I met a lot of a lot of great people and a few of them really stood out as being uh, really, really down to earth, uh, sincere, uh, good people. So we have one of, the, one of them as a guest tonight on, on the show. So I know you're all going to be wanting to stick around and listen to what this guy has to say. It's, he's got a lot of a lot of interesting stories. And before we get started, hi, honey, how are you doing? Oh. Did you get a good? All right. So you want to do the prayer list before yes, we get please. started with the show, please? Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, guys, everybody, we need to have prayers for Angie Napier and family, Louise Shiflet, who is Lloyd Davis's sister, Catherine and Roger Gay, Ron Mullins, Denise Preston, Angelique Benham, John and Amy Long, um, I'm sorry, Susie Robinson Jago, Della Woods Nolan, Bree Marshall and family, Elaine Lewis and family, Krista Michael Tweedy and family, Trey Hood, Sherry Griffey, Sam Burton, he's not feeling so well, Mark Staten, Cowboy 4572's wife Cindy, Scott's life's daughter Megan, Hawk, Hawk is not doing too good tonight guys, he's got vertigo real bad and he's trying to work, so send him lots of prayers and I hope you're safe out there Hawk tonight. Uh, right, Gina yeah. Cook, Mark and Linda Maycheck. Linda's mom passed away a few weeks ago, and we still need to keep them in our prayers. Uh, Mindy Masters, friend Eddie. Spilling tea with Spunky Sparky and Chloe and Nova. Vic and Vera Gulati. Martin Groves, who came back from the LBL sick again, as did Bart. Uh, Brother yeah. Heck. We're saying lots of prayers for you, Brother Heck. We're almost over. Sonia. Uh, Mason. DeCabbage and family, Mickey G and Brandon. Mickey G's not doing too good. She's got to have some more test ran. I won't go into details. That's for her to talk about, but she needs some prayers. Um, Greg Howe, R Randy Hutchins, Ash Staunton, Sherry Griffey's nephew, Mike, and cousin Lois, Larry and Pamela Fisher, Sue G's brother, Randy. He is home. He's doing a little bit better, but... Yeah, he still needs lots of prayers. Still got a ways to go to get better. Amber Croft, that's Bart's daughter. She's needing some prayers right now. Um, healing for Lisa Moore Onlow. I hope I said her name right. Elizabeth Ann is asking for those prayers. Peter uh, Tomasello is asking for his girlfriend's little daughter, Rosie. She's got a brain tumor, and she's having surgery Friday, so they're really needing prayers for that little girl. Uh, Josh and Nellie Turner, needed Joe Bob, is asking for work to pick up at EZA. Kate Webster, this is a good one, guys. We really need some prayers for this one. She's asking for everybody to pray for her so that she can maintain her, her uh, relationship with God. She just feels like she's slipping away and she wants to come back to God. And so, guys, extra prayers for Kate Webster, please, tonight. Uh, Kevin and Melissa Panay. <laughs> recently and he sings prayers and she does too she's living with him <laughs> Tyler Oliver's cousin Brianna Krista Tweedy's grandson Bennett and Kevin and D Murphy so say prayers for all those guys if you would please 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 do also I need to make sure that hey guys check and make sure you are subscribed to all your favorite channels there has been so many people that have contacted us Wines and Booze, BMR, I believe uh, Roger said his channel, Squatch and Holler, um, Texas Front Porch, Josh, everybody seems to be losing subscribers. 
for no reason. They go in and actually unsubscribe to Bart's channel tonight. When I logged in, it's the first thing I told Letitia. I couldn't believe it. Yep. So So it's the platform doing that, guys. So just make sure that you, if you are a subscriber, that you're still subbed. And you probably need to do that every week, I guess. (laughs) Right. Uh, Make sure you have your notification bell turned on. You know, we got some good stuff coming up. Before we get started with our amazing guest tonight. I have it, it, birthdays to oh, say. Oh, okay. Go ahead, honey. I thought you were doing <laughs> Happy birthday to the only birthdays I've got so far is Julie Scherer, E-Rev, and Linda Maycheck. So if you guys have a birthday in April, please just send it to me and just say, hey, this is the day. I don't need the year, just the month and day so I can give you a shout out. Hey, Phil. Hey, Larry. Hey, Maddie. Pamela. Yeah, hello to everyone in the chat. All our good friends. So many good people. Thank you all for being here. We really appreciate you being here. Hey, Brother Martin. Ready? Bubba. Yeah, before we get started, so I want to, you know, a couple of weeks ago we had the eclipse, right? And uh, I was just wondering if any of you guys in the audience noticed anything odd or unusual about that. So if you did, drop a drop a line in the comments, okay? Because I filmed the whole thing and I noticed uh, some peculiar things going on that didn't seem quite right to me. You know, I'm not a stargazer or anything like that, or an astrologist or anything like that, but theme that there's some stuff going on that wasn't wasn't quite natural looking to me but yeah drop a line if you if you notice anything odd and we're going to get right to our guest this is a a wonderful fellow uh he has his own youtube channel we're uh, proud to welcome him into our humanoid family tonight it's called squatch and holler and his name is Mr. Roger Williams. Hello, South Force Tim and everybody. Hey, South Force Hey, Jesse, yeah, Ruthie. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. Let's bring Roger in. How you doing there, Brother Roger? Hey, Roger. Doing good. Thank y'all. Um, I'm looking forward to this. I usually don't get nervous before uh, shows, but I've actually been, you know, I've watched y'all. I've watched Krista and Brandy and all, the, all of them, and I've been in chat some when I can, and um, it's a little different. Uh, well, just I don't look know at why. it this way, Roger. We've watched you too, so. No reason to get nervous here, Rog. No reason to get nervous here at all. We're just here to, <laughs> to tell the truth, and you know, it's uh, it's a good thing that we do here. We're, we're not yeah. doing anything for the wrong reason. So, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to come on the show. Yes, sir. Thank you for asking. Yeah, I met you and your wife Heather a couple of weeks ago. I was really impressed with you guys and your your honesty and sincerity. I know that you're. Uh, uh, you're a, a fellow Christian. Uh, yes, sir. You believe in God and you, you follow Jesus. And everything you tell us tonight is going to be the absolute truth. Yes, and sir. That's why you're here. So let's and, get started, brother. Tell us a little bit about yourself for people who don't know. I want everybody to go after the show and subscribe to Squatch and Holler, okay? We want to see these uh, wonderful people grow as we all grow together. Well, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Raj. You know, I grew up in the Southern Middle um, just a lot of times running the woods by myself and, you know, and things happened and you don't get to talk about it. There's not, there were no reference. There's nothing. Go to the library. Get, there may be two books, you know, back in the day, every now and then see something on TV and um, had things happen. I didn't understand. And <clears throat> it was very late in life. Uh, I'm 53 and my first conference of any kind was last july i met you guys uh which i had interacted with daryl martin some martin had contacted me he had heard my story on um a podcast and he it was it was so nice of him to reach out and and it's just i think people recognize and they understand you don't get to talk to just anybody some of this stuff and uh i didn't realize i didn't know if i I never thought I'd be doing a show, but I helped. Well, me neither, brother. So you're yeah, a good I, and, and I'm going to tell you, one of the benefits that I did not expect, I I started mine so I could ask the questions because I had so many questions. And I get wrapped up in the stories and, you know, I'll write the questions down on the side and I'll let the guests go. And But I had so many when I helped um, uh, co-host, I, I couldn't ask but just a few. But the one thing I did not expect, and you all know, when I say this, you guys will know, all of y'all, when you get those emails, thank you. Thank you for telling this. Thank you for explaining this. Thank you for telling your story. It helped me with mine. Um, and mine 
the first time I ever told mine publicly on a podcast, it was like therapy. I didn't realize it. I was gushing. It was all coming out, and it and it's like, ooh, it's all you know. It felt like it was off of me. It doesn't go away, but it, it's a huge it, weight it really, off, your, it off your shoulders. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, and I, but I did not expect um, the thank yous and the 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 you know, hey, I need to talk to you, but you can't tell my name, and um, you know, and and if if somebody contacts me. I don't know something like if they was to contact me and ask me a question about dog, man, I'm sending them to you, <laughs> you know, cause I don't, I yeah. don't know. Um, but I have learned, um, in this process in the past year or a little over a year that everything's connected. I always felt that way, but now I'm, it's all of this stuff somehow is together. And, um, you're in the right oh. place, brother. I've been preaching that from the <laughs> rooftops for, uh, well, publicly since 2005. So, yeah. So, tell us, Raj, uh, tell us uh, what your first inhumanoid sighting or encounter was like for you. Did it change your life? What happened with that? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so, when this thing stepped out, it was, it was a Bigfoot. When it stepped out in front of me, it you notice all this at the same time. It's like in your mind scrambles a little bit because I knew how my dad was five eight. Well, I knew what he looked like at that point where I saw this thing step out. And this it was you know you use the term everybody does and possibly large and all that and the the size of it and and it's uh, your mind just scrambles. So you know after that. And, and what's weird, I always say this, <clears throat> if I'd have been any other time of day, a few minutes before I, heard, I, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you now. But for some reason, and I felt like this throughout my life, I've been shown things. And when this Bigfoot stepped out, I didn't know what it was at first. But it was, it was looking up the hill away from me. I was to its right. And it acknowledged me. It It turned its shoulders and looked right at me to like, I know you're here because I've hunted those woods since I was eight and I was 14 at the time. And I feel like it, <clears throat> it knew me. It was familiar with me because I've had things happen before. Didn't know what it was. And just found out later in life, watching YouTube and watching shows and talking to researchers and <clears throat> what it could have been. Excuse me. Sorry. But, um, but yeah, it, um, I went from being brave and going in the woods with a $2 flashlight that you barely could see the ground with an hour before daylight, hour after dark, you know, 12 years old, whatever, to hunting fields mostly where I could see, where I could see my surroundings a little better and have a little more warning. Now I do hunt the woods, but not by myself as much. And it's, it's not a very comfortable thing now to hunt and get somewhere and leave in the dark. It changed when I'm driving through any state. Uh, I'm always on the lookout. You know, I'm always scanning the woods, scanning everything, and yeah, yeah. So everybody wants to see Bigfoot, right, Roger? Until they see Bigfoot, and then they can't unsee it. <laughs> yeah, so, so. but the <clears throat> but the thing it did. I don't know whether I'm open minded because I saw a Bigfoot or I saw a Bigfoot because I'm open minded. I haven't figured that out yet. I think there's something to that, but yeah, you, you, people always say, I, I want to see this or that. And at some, at some points in my life, uh, I've actually prayed like, God, please take this off of me. I don't, I don't want this anymore, you know? And yeah. so it works at times, but anyway, me too. I prayed that years ago and here I am. He's, uh, he set me on a course. Uh, it seems like a collision course with one of these things. So it's all, we all, we leave it all but into his hands and we just go as we're directed and hopefully he'll protect us from these things. And right. so when you saw this Bigfoot when you was 12 years old, uh, it, you didn't like hunting in the woods where you couldn't see the, your surroundings very well. So you stuck in the open spaces, right? Yeah. I, I would pick, I, you know, we pick good hunting spots, but, um, uh, it wasn't the same as like having tree stands deep in the woods. Um, 
Yeah. And then a lot of times too, I mean, if if me and my son are are walking in the woods exploring, you know, I'm I'm looking at choke points and ambush points and uh, all kinds of it. It's just you. Uh, you don't look at the woods the same. You know, if if something is laid over the trail to make you go around a tree, I'm like, oh, you know, this would be a good spot to get boogered. You know, <laughs> but, right. and, I, and I know y'all. Um, I laugh a lot. Uh, I take it seriously, but it may, when I get nervous, I do I do laugh a little bit. So, <laughs> well, that's all right, brother. So laughter is the best medicine. So after after you saw Bigfoot, and that was like the pivotal point in your life. You know, you have the. <clears throat> Uh, when you look back to your life, it's the it's divided into two parts now. It's before you saw this creature and after you saw this creature. Yes, because now, I know you've been giving a lot of interviews, right, and talking about this this stuff. But no one's ever asked you, I think, if you've ever seen uh, UFO as well, or lived in haunted houses and stuff like that. So here's where we uh, really show the interconnectedness of these unknown unexplained phenomena so you did uh see a ufo in the sky right yes it was it was about three years later um and it wasn't <clears throat> um hey i think that's a ufo hey that could have been what was that flash it was clear it was the if you heat up metal and it turns that aren't hot orange it was that color and it mm -hmm. definitely the outline was crisp uh there was no there was no propulsion. There was no sound. It was gliding like it was on magnetic tracks. So it was that smooth. And when it came across, you know, if, if it, if when it left, if it went north, south, east, and west, I th thought somebody was, you know, trying to play a joke on me. But it was about October and there's no leaves on the trees, clear night, stars <laughs> out, you know, no clouds. And this thing went down behind some trees. And I, there was a hill about a half a mile away, approximately. So I went down behind those trees. So, wait a minute, this thing might be big. And, <clears throat> you know, it gives you a point of reference to, to kind of uh, see the size. And when it came back up, you know, I almost ran in to the, the store. I was outside there in Mooresville to get some people, get somebody to see this. And I'm like, no, you may miss something. That's the thought I had that I had. Yeah. And when it started back up, which just all happened pretty quick within a couple minutes. It came back up really smooth and it stopped at that same level that it had started down at. Once again, no propulsion, no sound. When it left, it just went straight up and it was gone in a split second. So, yeah, that myself. So, Bigfoot, you start questioning, hey, if these things are real and they're saying they're not, what else is real? That was a old crap moment in my life yeah. and then that that second one was the number two and i don't know which one was more um because when it went into space that was different that was like oh no <clears throat> that that opens up a lot of can of worms cans of worms or whatever right and you went it went so fast it was like the one that i see or used to see i don't see much anymore but it went up so fast that you knew no human being could survive the g-force uh right. more than crafts, right Right. We, you know, we have a Hunts Huntsville Space and Rocket Center 45 minutes from here or so. And our our classes had gone down a few times and you get in the G-Force G machine and they put you at three, three or four G face feels like it's coming off. And I'm like, I don't want to see six. And as soon as it went up, I'm like, I don't know what would have survived that. You know, it, it's no it's, physical creature. <laughs> no. Yeah, and, been a point cake. You know, and I talked to a guy, the MUFON investigator, and I, I asked him, I'm like, you know, it took me like 30 years to, to even come up with this question. You know, if you shoot a 22 or something, it's got that crack where it breaks the sound barrier and all that. Mm -hmm. And I realized I didn't hear a sonic boom. And it took me all those years to figure, to, I knew, I know about how that works. And and I asked him, he said, well, when the Tic Tac video, if you notice, it has a cold protective layer around it. He said, maybe they're um, manipulating atmosphere, you know, in a way or whatever that that wouldn't apply. I'm like, well, I mean, I'll go with that because I should have heard one as fast as it left. So, right. Yeah. So it's, to me, that indicates that it wasn't really a, a solid physical craft. 
So, you know, we have, the, we have our laws of physics and uh, these UFOs or what they're calling UAPs these days. Right. Uh, they seem to have no problem breaking those laws of physics or bending them or they're completely impervious to them. And just like these in humanoids, uh, they, they break the laws of physics as well. Yeah, I mean, how how do you how do you have a trackway? Uh, Green has a trackway in his cornfield, and it impressions really deep, and all of a sudden it just disappears, right in the middle of the field. Yeah, that's, how do we explain that? That's not normal, right? That certainly wasn't a big monkey out there in the middle of that field, <laughs> no. and that's what no. everyone wants you to believe. But we're here to break that narrative because the narrative is, is false, and I know from personal experience that these. Uh, in humanoids, people call Bigfoot. They have abilities that no no one can explain in, in, a, in a purely scientific, physical manner. You know, they can uh, they can go completely invisible to the human eye. And I mm -hmm. experienced this twice, or I, or I wouldn't be telling you it's the truth. You know, I'm not telling you my opinion. It's, it's right. what actually happened to me, so I know it's true. And you can't debate someone's honest and true opinion, uh, true experience with only your opinion and expect to win. So I know that knows these things that they can do things that no natural animal can, you know, they can make you see things that's not there and make you not see things that are there. So they can, in a way they can manipulate your perception, which is another form of mind control, which is something that no natural species uh, can claim to, to have that. Right. So, I can't get her to go outside. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're sorry if you hear Rosie, guys. So we had our, our air conditioning unit uh, break down a couple of days ago. It's really, really hot in here. Our dog is agitated. So <laughs> very agitated for that. <laughs> yeah. So any other strange lights that you have ever seen, oh, Roger, uh, during your experiences in Tennessee? Yes. Um, there's been a there's been, there's been a lot of stuff happen and some recently, but the first orb I ever saw. Um, there's a story you, you guys in chat if y'all want to Google uh, the Chapel Hill light, Chapel Hill, Tennessee. It's a story made up about uh, somebody that got injured or killed on the tracks and lantern and all that. Well, I you know I don't go looking for that stuff, but in high school I got talked into it. The first time we went, nothing. You know, and then uh, the second time we went, I happened to be riding in a truck on the passenger side and expecting nothing. You know, I was more worried about somebody coming up and messing with us, shaking the truck or whatever and trying to scare us. Uh, but all of a sudden, there's a light appears in the woods to my right and, and probably at about, you know, five o'clock over here. And I look back and what I saw next probably would have scared me more if I hadn't seen ball lightning before. And I say that to compare uh, what it looked like, but it was about the size of a beach ball and it was coming through the woods and it was, it's like the trees was, were affecting it, its path. And oh, I can never get this across. If you think about an orb, something perfectly round and light is emanating in every direction, every direction. And it's moving through the woods. The the shadows from those trees were doing this. And and it was one of the most amazing sights. Um, but somehow I, knew, I understood it. So I, I, I locked on to this thing. And it followed the contour of the land up the train tracks. And it was moving so fast. But what this is what happened next. And this ties into the UFO later. I, I think I've been shown things, right? Right. So this thing goes up on the tracks. When it gets in between the tracks, it, it shakes and stabilizes like it's a magnetic pull. And it and then it, it steadies. And when it steadies, it starts gliding down the track toward us. And I could see the reflection in the track, uh, the smooth, you know, where the train goes and the, and the tracks are smooth and the reflection, come, you know, coming at us. It's moving toward us. I don't know how far it actually went, maybe 20 yards or so. And then as quick as it had come out of the woods, it looked like something ripped it, ripped it off the tracks. And it followed the contour again. And it did the same thing back through the woods and those trees and those reflections. I never would have thought of that, uh, that optics, you know, of seeing light coming out in every direction. And what 
I don't know if they could recreate it. You'd have to have some computer to um, to do that, you know. Um, but you know, if you've got a light and then you can tell my light source is hitting me right here, and my shadow will be right back behind me. Well, right. this was crazy. So seeing that magnetic pull, I'm like, wait a minute, that UFO moved the same way. It was gliding the same way. It was that smooth. And what it means, I don't know. But um, I start seeing these things and, and comparing it to other things. That's why I feel like things are connected. Because every time something happens, it, it reminds me of something else or, you know, whatever. So, and that was an amazing experience. And there were two witnesses with me. And... I've told that story and I've also what it does, Barton, <laughs> when people post uh, videos of the Chapel Hill light and they're telling, no, I know what it looks like. I've seen it up close and personal. And when they try to fake these videos, I don't call them out and I don't think they do it much anymore, but I've seen some fake videos, obviously to me, because I've seen uh, now my wife, uh, we've been together four years. Uh, she's never had anything happen until she got with me. So I don't know if I'm drawing these things, but we were at our uh, hot spot in the north end of the county. And we sometimes we get out, listen. Sometimes we walk. Sometimes we sit in a truck. About 20 yards away, 10 foot up in a tree. She's like, what is that light? I'm like, I, I don't know. I can't see it. I'm on the other side of the truck. And I finally get my eyes on it. And I've been told orbs are not always round. So it was about, you know, 10 inches or so. And it was pulse. It was one light, but it was flat and kind of curved. And it was pulsating and changing sizes. It did this for 20 minutes. I didn't have a channel. Um, my investigative part, I was, we were just kind of stunned. We backed the truck up, pulled up, getting better angles at it. And uh, it lasted for 20 minutes. And I didn't get it on film. But she wow. knows. She spotted it, and there was no – I went back. I always question things. I went back. The next day, I looked under the tree for uh, – somebody had been maybe walking. I looked for a uh, game cam, trail cam, whatever. There was nothing. So that's the only two that I can tell you that were definitely not um, somebody. There's yeah. been a couple that could have been but it shouldn't have been. And and that's, I'm not going to put that in the same category as, as those two, because I can't say with 100% uh, you know, certainty that, that it wasn't somebody were, somewhere where they shouldn't have been. So yeah, Real that's quick, a good observation. Uh, I was going to say, there's been a couple questions while you were talking about the orbs. They want to know what color it was. Um, the, the first one was a, an electric ball lightning, bluish white. And because I saw saw ball lightning one time, and it was that same energy, it was that same intensity, no sound though. There was no nothing, and it, it was right there. We couldn't hear anything. The second one was more like a uh, yellowish white, not quite orange, but not but dingy white maybe. And it didn't change color. It just changes. It changed sizes, and it would it would it was about the same length. But it was more changing sizes depth wise. Mm -hmm. And it was it wasn't a rhythm like, you know, or anything. It was just it was the one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. And I was glad that she was there. Uh yeah. because, you know, if you if you've got two or three people see the same thing and you can compare what you saw, uh then well, then it makes you feel like you're not crazy yourself, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. So from your observation, you know, it was a good one. You you, you uh, remarked on the similarity of movement between two uh, seemingly unrelated phenomena, right? So, and uh, I'm in the same boat as you with, with Letitia. She had never experienced any of this stuff before. Uh, and within a year of us getting together, she had already seen Bigfoot. Oh, wow. Which is, yeah, which is, I thought was just crazy. And now... We've been together 15 years, and she's already seen three different cryptids, or what people call cryptids. Now, two of them uh, might have actually been cryptids, but yeah. the Bigfoot was was an humanoid, obviously. But she saw and uh, she saw some kind of four-legged creature 
across the road, right in front of her headlights, right down the street from where we're living right now. And she also saw, with, all, with other witnesses, a bat-like creature uh, in the land between the lakes. It had glowing red eyes, uh, much like your what you saw in LBL. Yeah. I want to get into that next, if you don't mind, brother. We was all down there in LBL a couple of weeks ago, and so many people had things happen to them, right? Yeah. Maybe can you turn the fan in here a little bit, yeah. please? I'm sorry, guys. It's really hot yes. here. You know, we're sorry about that, guys. So many people had things happen to them, Roger, and you, you and your wife, Heather, uh, were just two of them, right? So tell us what happened to you guys down there. Well, uh, first of all, Barton uh, saw an orb, and we were talking about it, and he said, what color is your tent? And I said, it's blue. He said, they have a white on it. And I yeah. said, yeah, it was right under our tent, and we hear things in the woods. That old film, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so what we did, uh, we would stay some nights, but also we had a cabin just in case, and it got cold. So one, uh, maybe on Friday night, I believe, about 1130, we started out of Colson Hollow. So, you know, we probably came out on the main highway 15 minutes later, driving slow. When we turn south, there is a picnic area, Colson picnic area. The first road to the left, Barton, y'all y'all know where that's at. Oh, yeah. Um, we were coming around a, a long, drawn-out curve, in, you know, around midnight. And all of a sudden, this white wolf, big white wolf, appeared coming out of the wood, coming up the hill, and it was locked on to something. You've seen coyotes, wolves, and dogs, and when they're, they're after prey, they're, they're focused on it, and they got tunnel vision. This thing came up <clears throat> looking across the road, and when it, our headlights hit it, it scared it. And it turned, and you, you've seen what, how a squirrel, it, it don't know at first which way it wants to go, and it does that shimmy like, uh, you know, do it, should I go right, left, or whatever. When it turned towards the truck, it was the brightest red eye shine that, and of course, it's big, but the the eye made him look like three times bigger, and it was intense. It um, and when it did the shimmy, it kind of blurred a little bit, which freaked me out some. But when, but the thing was, it didn't move exactly like a dog should move. Instead of dipping and turning or or whatever, it his front legs up. And pivoted, it turned in the middle with its back feet still towards the road. And it probably 75, 80% of the way around with the feet still on the ground. And then when the feet were landing, then that's when the tail came around on the trailer, you know. And then it ran at, at an angle. I could see the, the tree that, that it went behind. And I'm thinking, it's about to cross that dirt road right here. So I whipped the truck in and it's not there. <clears throat> well, I'm looking at the tree line to my right, and Heather, she doesn't cuss, she doesn't do, she said, oh, heavens, and I'm like, what, where's it at, where, where, you know, where, because <laughs> that's, that's big for her, and she said, I just saw vapor across the road, and I'm like, uh-oh, so I put it in reverse, and we're, we're out of there, and I get to talking to her about it, I'm like, well, how, how big was this vapor, I'm thinking tall, you know, because we had seen cloaking before we think mm -hmm. uh, me and my son she said no it was about the size of a dog and it crossed from one side of the road to the other in those other woods and i'm like oh man I, it, it's just it was such a weird um you know when i first saw it i'm thinking almost like wow cool you know a white wolf you know then they have wolves there you you know you're there all the time and but when but when it started moving it was different so it moved like, would you say it moved like it had a human waist as opposed to a, a, a well, waist? I I didn't know what to think until I talked to, to you. Um, it didn't move like a dog. So if a dog would have turned, you know, we're still, I mean, dogs are deer. They move a certain way all the time. It it When it turned, it turned in that waist area. And I've never seen one turned that ain't that far around before the feet you know most dogs i ever see they 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 get low and change direction this thing the feet came up and it came around i've never seen that that i remember um and that's what then the red eye shine i don't know what shines red 
um, that well, that I confused one, me. I seen red eye shine one time, and it was uh, I was five years old, and a black panther ran out in front of our car, our car, and it had red eye shine in the in the headlights. But that's it. I don't know of any, any right. dog that has red eye shine. But when this and, thing turned around, brother, uh, and you did you did you notice a tail? That was one of the no. questions I asked. Is any that's, tail at all? That's weird. No, I did not. Uh, and I don't know whether I was focused on what I could identify, you know, the ears and the, the, the canine head and all that. I don't, that's what was going on, but I, I, can't, I don't remember a tail, but you know, I've seen mountain lions change direction and they use that big tail to whip around to help them out. And I, I didn't think about that uh, until I was explaining it and people started asking questions, but I can't remember a tail at all. Right, that's true. It might have been there, but I, I, I just didn't, you know, didn't Most focus on who, it. Right. Most people who see Dog Man uh, don't remember a tail, right? So you might have have maybe one or two out of ten who actually notice the tail, and it's a kind of an odd little detail about these Dog Man creatures. And it's also very odd that you saw a white wolf with glowing red eyes, and your wife saw a uh, vapor. So you yeah. you each perceive this very differently, right? And and that's what I say. These in humanoids, they can uh, in in some ways control your perception. So very very interesting story. We had so there's a story right there. Holly says that she, the same thing happened to her friend coming back from Tennessee. She was driving near Cherokee, North Carolina. She saw a huge white wolf on the side of the road, and they don't have white wolves in North Carolina that she knows of. Right, and I've never heard of an albino wolf in the LBL either. Um, I don't know. I have to ask my wildlife biologist friend if yeah. he's ever seen one there. Uh, I didn't think a, about that. He made remarks to me about that. So I mean, he's out there every day, you know, and I'm, I'm so lucky and blessed to have this fellow as, as my friend and brother. You know, I, I did not I think about albino. Yeah, and he'll, he'll tell me, you know, what exactly what it is, the species name, and He's heard it all before and seen it all before. And it's funny you were talking about the orb <laughs> 20 minutes. And you never thought to get your phone out. Or gonna take no. Video. It's the same thing. Now. Just about a month ago, we was down in NLBL and I did a, a Aztec death stream. Just, you know, on a spur of the moment <laughs> kind of thing. I was outside of the vehicle taking a, a bathroom break and I just happened to do it, you know, and something answered me back immediately and it's so it just startled me so much and everybody you know there was four of us it was me and brother martin and brother daryl and and brother ron uh four of them and the other three in the car went on there all said oh my gosh what was that what was that and i'm like wow i don't know and i still <laughs> didn't think to take my phone out right some youtuber i am so I screamed again. I did the scream again. And at that point, Daryl, brother Daryl, took his phone out and recorded what happened. Or it would have just been another story, uh, another crazy mm -hmm. old story with no evidence. But as it turned out, this thing answered me three times. It was uh, three different creatures from three different locations. And I sent the video to my my biologist friend, my scientist friend. And he, he said, Bart, what you have here is something that I've never heard before in my life. Yeah. You have actually captured an unknown animals, vocalizations of unknown animals there in the LBL. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was crazy how, what you think of and think about when you're having one of these experiences and what you don't think about. And the last thing I thought about was the YouTube channel or getting mm -hmm. the phone out right. Or, you know, I was just so in the moment and surprised and kind of shocked by what was happening. I never thought to get my phone yeah. out. And and people people can armchair quarterback. I do it sometimes with other things. Uh, they can tell you what you should have done. But oh, yeah. the, when I found tracks in Red Hollow uh, last year, the week of Thanksgiving, and got that documented on video, I was scared to death. I was out to shoot my wife. My wife was in the truck with a dog, eighty yards away, and I'm like, I, I can't call myself a researcher and not document this. And I saw a, a big dog track and I saw, you know, the 18 inch Bigfoot track, several other tracks, smaller. Um, and I sound calm, 
but I'm I'm running inside. I'm like, and I'm looking at the woods. And I, I when we get back, I get back to the truck. The, the doors are locked, and I'm like, what what's going What's going on? The windows are up. Well, uh, I heard a rock come from out of the woods and skip towards the truck. I'm like, that's when you start blowing the horn, Heather. <laughs> Let yeah. me know. But uh, people made fun of me. Why didn't you cast it? I could have had a trailer truck truck load of casting material and I still wouldn't be a cast because I was by myself basically. And I wasn't turning my back. I, I had to get out of there. I was scared. I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not too proud to, to tell you I was terrified because when you see 18 foot, 18 inch foot tr- footprint and it's, you know, it's nine, half, nine inches uh, at the top and the toes look like marshmallows about two and a half inch deep. It's time mm-hmm. for me to go. <laughs> right, <and that> plastic <laughs> it takes a while to dry, you know, you gotta sit there and wait for it yep. to dry or come back. So, and really, if you'd you have you cast that print, there's been thousands of, of footprints cast, right? And it's other than uh, uh, conversation pieces, they prove nothing. So, I don't, I personally don't uh, cast any footprints that I find. I rarely find any here in my part of Kentucky, but when I do, I just take pictures. I don't really want anything like that in my house, to right. be honest with you. Well, the only reason we found them was because there was a there was a drought and it hadn't rained in six or seven weeks, and Brett, the the bay there was almost dry. There was barely just a little bit of water, and I could see the track, the campsites, and I'm like, those tracks, and, you know, I could see the small tracks, the deer and all that, but I said, like, oh, I, I I had to go look, and you know, I had my poor man's GoPro, and I, I did a pretty decent job with it. Um, but I didn't have my phone with me. Uh, I, I couldn't take pictures or whatever. But um, these people that uh, tell you what you should have done, you know, the LBL, let's just put, just say the LBL, that's such a creepy place. When something happens, if, if you if you have four or five people with you, that's different. But if you have, if I have my wife with me and my dog, that I feel like I'm the protector, I'm getting them out of danger Right. Right. So I, I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody. I've seen a Bigfoot. I know they're real. I've never until this past year found tracks and it was just the, the, the way that weather had been that allowed us to amateur to, to see them. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad we made it out of there, but I, I was scared. So. Sure. Yeah, when you have your wife there with you, you don't want anything to happen to your wife or your pet. Right. You know, uh, luckily, my wife is just as brave as I am. <laughs> but still, if I felt that our lives were ever in danger, we, I would I would get her out of there immediately. And we yep. went going to some pretty pretty wild places. You know, just me and Letitia. And, uh, well, we've been going to the LBL just me and you no, since two thousand and nine. People don't right. people don't know that, but. We, we go back a ways to the LBL. Right, and we uh, we camped twice on well, two different occasions. We actually camped on the uh, alleged attack site where the family was murdered. We camped right there, and I was grilling st- grilling steaks and frying bacon and everything that I could do, you know. And I didn't even have a sword. Or <laughs> all I had was a knife and a walking stick. Yep. And we walking those trails at two and three a.m. in the morning, you know, and. Nothing. All we had was an old timey camera. You remember yeah. that little camera? Yeah. It's just like a 35 millimeter camera, I think, when they kind of was <laughs> popular. And I was just walking around snapping pictures up in the middle there. And the only thing we really got was remember that picture that we got of mm-hmm. that face? Yeah. We're still not sure what that was all about. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we've been going down there for a long time. Well, yeah. I've watched, uh, you know, I've watched all of y'all shows, the Blonde and Booze, and you guys, and, and Elijah, and, uh, him, him and uh, Gabby. Uh, when when y'all are doing live stuff, it's just I'm I'm locked in on the computer screen. Well, it's like I'm there with you, yeah. <laughs> and I appreciate y'all doing that because sure, I mean, it's like I can't get out every weekend, and uh, and I know people in chat may not ever see Land Between the Lakes, and yeah. just just bringing I do videos just to to bring people along, like right. hey, this is where we live, this is what we do, um, yeah, it's for fun, and a lot of people appreciate it, but. Yeah, sure, they move vicariously through our videos. You know, I've had so many people contact me and say, uh, "Thanks for thank, thanks for doing this, Barton Letitia. You know, I'm confined to a wheelchair, 
or I'm confined yeah. to my bed. I'm bedridden and I can't do yeah. any of this stuff, but I'm living it all through you guys. And thank you so much. And Romans 116. Hello there. Uh, love your handle, man. <laughs> not ashamed of the Lord either. Not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Uh, that's the that's the only only person who's who can make me bow my knee and the only person whose word I trust with my eternal soul. So, yeah, great moniker. Good to see you. But let me ask you this, Roger. You know, you've, you've had. Uh, you've I want had, to say something real quick. If y'all okay, sure. you guys say say an extra prayer for Hawk. He's just not doing too good tonight. He's trying to work. He's got vertigo, and I'm I'm really worried about him. So, uh, just say an extra yes, prayer please. for Hawk for us, please. You better I'm soon, sorry, brother. I didn't mean to interrupt, but we really need some prayers. Yeah, mm -hmm. hope you feel better soon, my friend. We've been friends forever. I don't know about 15 years now. So, <laughs> that's a great guy. Um, but Rogers, you've seen Bigfoot at this point. You've seen um, a genuine, genuine UFO, right? Yes, sir. And orbs. So the next question I ask is if you have ever lived in a haunted house in your life. The first house I remember living in, um, everybody, my, my aunt, was she was living with us. She was 13 or 14. I was, you know, two and three years old. And um, I had a, I knew stuff was going on, but I, at that age, but the thing that happened to me, I'd have a reoccurring nightmare two or three times a week. And as soon as it started, I knew what was coming. You know, I was sleeping. And uh, it was so many times that I still, it's still here. I, I can see every detail, but the first thing I would be doing would be looking down at myself sleeping and then floating in the air. And then, you know, there's a little boy, blue eyes waving. And, and then at the very end of the dream, uh, he would have me by the wrist in the dark in my room. And my dad, for some reason, instead of having my hand, this kid's mind, it was a dish towel. And I had the other end. He's like, don't let go, don't let go. And the kids are saying, he's saying, please come play with me. And as my hand started slipping off, I'd wake up every time in a sweat, run to my mom, and dad's room. She popped my diaper all the way back to the bed, <laughs> get back oh. in here. And uh, uh, years later, they were telling ghost stories on Halloween. And I didn't want any part of that because uh, of things that, that happened me and I uh, almost walked off but somebody said my mom's name's Patsy she, they said Patsy tell them about that haunted house y'all lived in up at above the bowling alley where the kid accidentally hung himself and I froze goosebumps total body I hadn't I never heard that and I'm like wait a minute uh what's this story and they were telling me I said did he have blonde hair blue eyes and they're like well, yeah, uh, that was that was him, and and I told them I ended up telling the ghost story, uh, and there was a playroom, uh, my playroom, which is an old dark room uh, for, for for photography, had the sinks and everything, and I guess the person who lived there uh, after that had a dark room, and that was my playroom, and I would my mom was like, hey, go to the playroom. No, no I didn't like going in there because. I would be in there and it would be summertime uh, comfortable and the temperature would drop. I would see my breath and I would have the creepy feels and I would run in there and we, I got in trouble for not just going and playing, but I wouldn't go in that room. I would fight. I, you know, no, I'm not going in there. And then when they told that story, it all started to make sense. And then when it starts making sense, it's even scarier to me. Yeah. Uh, what if I had of not, what if I hadn't woke up, you know, during that dream uh so with 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 that starting out with that and um uh my my aunt talk voices and things being moved and you know i don't know whether that's i don't know that's just what they were saying i just know what happened to me and you know all throughout my life i've had things happen my mom and i saw it was raining. I was about 12, I guess, somewhere in that area. And this man, it was raining uh, dark, as you know, on Morsel Highway. This man walked out in front of us with a yellow rain slicker and a hood and two. 
And I remember my mom sliding to a stop and him looking in their windshield, the lights reflecting off of him. And he gives us this look like, what are you doing? And my mom's blowing the horn and she's saying a few words she shouldn't be saying. He walks on. She comes home and she's still fussing about it. Told my dad. And he said, Patsy, um, that that couldn't have happened. She said, well, it did. Roger saw it. I saw it. She almost got him. And uh, he looked right at us. And he's, he said, okay, so where would he be coming from and going to? What do you mean? He said, there's no house there and there's no barn. But there used to be. And there's an old man that used to walk across the road and feed. He's been dead for 30 years. And my mom's like, you're messing with me. So at our store the next day, he said, you be quiet. He said, I'm going to, when a certain people, person comes in, I'm going to talk to him. He said, hey, John, Patsy says she saw a guy walk across, told the story. He said, that couldn't have happened. He's been dead, you know, a long time. But that's what he dressed as. He said, that old barn, you barely can see some of the walls still up and the house is gone. And so, you know, and there, there's more, but, uh, that, that right there, um, it, but it looks, he looks solid. The lights were reflecting off his slicker and he looked, I saw his face. So, you know, you're not thinking ghost at that point, you know, if we yeah. never had heard, told my dad, we wouldn't have known, but, uh, how does stuff like that happen? Is it, is it replaying from, I don't know, but he reacted to us. Whatever it was reacted to us almost, you know, hitting him. So, so we know it wasn't a replay of anything, Roger. Right. If right. reacted to you, then it's happening in the moment in real right. time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there, so you have all these experiences, man. Uh, <clears throat> Bigfoot, you got UFOs, you got orbs, you got living in haunted houses, you've seen ghosts. You know, what are the odds of one person experiencing all of those yep. unexplained phenomena? Yeah. Right. And That's the statistically impossible and yet it happens again and again and again but the thing is most people who, who do interviews like this they don't know to ask the right questions right has anybody ever asked you about all your other experiences before and all the interviews that you've done no it's either um it's either bigfoot or or a ghost show or something like that it's, it's not a uh, I've asked people in, in talking about this with other people and listening to y'all shows, listening to the blonde and booze. And, uh, you know, it seems like, and sometimes when I'm telling my story, I'm like, Roger, you sound crazy. I mean, I know, I know how it sounds. The people who don't know you, people that haven't experienced anything, or maybe just have seen a cryptid, you know, and haven't, you know, experienced the other uh, I understand how it sounds, and but at sure. this point, I'm like, if I don't tell the stories, you know, it doesn't do anybody any good, and it helps me. Um, I had something happen one time, Barton. One of the, the scariest things that ever happened. I had a dream that I was in my uncle's back, and this goofy look on my face and my beside me. Well, I woke up, and I'm circumstances would put me there. We never go over there, you know. Well, a few so weeks later, you yeah, you're, 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 you're kind of uh, spinning out there for a second. Emma, I'm sorry. That's all so, right. So, what I had a dream, and uh, I was in my uncle's house, and I had a pink. I was shaving with a pink razor, and I and I, my cousin was beside me, and I'm <laughs> like, what would what would put what circumstances would do that when I woke up, you know? Well, a few weeks later, my our parent, both of our parents went on vacation, and I stayed over to kind of help keep an eye on the younger kid. I worked at the sheriff's department, and we had to be clean shaven. And guess what? I forgot my razor. And I'm putting all this together, and I asked my cousin if, if there was a new razor in the house. She said, "I've got some, but you may not want to use them." I'm like, "Okay." So I picked it up, I had lathered up, and I looked up, and that had that same look on my face. So, in the dream. My sister and my cousin came out of a bedroom, shut the door. They were arguing. They walked up the hallway. They went in another door, knocked something off the kitchen. And I turned to Stephanie. And I said, this is what's about to happen. I gave her word for word what they were going to say, what was going to happen. And it happened exactly like I told her. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me and said, how in the world did you know that? I'm like, I dreamed it. I dreamed it. It was, it was a good I've had deja vu before where, you know, somebody might say something and I'm like, mm -hmm. that sounded familiar or, or that building looked familiar or that circumstance, but never that long. And um, 
That was another time I was praying. Please, I don't want this. <laughs> Please, God, take this off of me, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. I have no idea. But what it does, Barton, is when I'm talking to somebody on my show, they, I let them talk, and and I don't even, I don't even, I don't doubt them. I know there are people that uh, will elaborate or whatever, but I just let them talk because the the crazy stuff I'm sitting here telling you, I have no right to doubt anybody. So right, me either, me either, Roger. All we can do is, uh, if someone tells us stories, we try to get to know the person and try to get to. Uh, learn if they're telling the truth or not right we have to try to vet as as much as we can and kate webster asked if uh martin and i've ever uh taken a what you say emf or whatever when it was uh geiger counter we're, we're we're naturally radioactive kate so we would break the geiger counter so <laughs> yeah so when we go down to lbl we actually uh irradiate the place ourselves oh it's <laughs> it's Y'all, um, okay. even at the LBL the other night, um, something walked where you caught the orb at. It was it was uh, about eleven thirty. No, it was it was later than that. But we heard something walking towards our tent, and I'm on the back wall there, and it sounded like two feet, and it wasn't real heavy, but it was when it came by me, I could hear it breathing. I could hear that congested breathing right beside the tent, and it sounded like it possibly could have been four foot tall, maybe or a little taller. And then it walked beside the next one and then it peeled off and went that dry creek bed back there and went back into the woods. Well, I could hear the people at the fire saying, what is that? You hear that walking? They could hear it over there. And uh, I I don't know what that was. I'm not, it, it could have been something because inside a tent, I haven't been camping in a while. And inside that tent, things were magnified a little bit. So <clears throat> it could have been totally something normal, but it didn't sound normal. Yeah. And, People pulled the therms, that thermal, that whatever you call them things, and was looking. But y'all, that that I, I love the LBL. I'm drawn to it, but uh, I'm also scared of it too. So, right. A lot of people get drawn to the LBL. Once you've been there, you want to keep going back and back. Yeah, it's like you can never visit once. And Mountain Dew, bring Steve Isdall to LBL. He'd know how to hunt humanoids. No, I don't think he would. Uh, Mountain Dew. But open invitation for Steve to come down sometime and and uh, see what he can do if he thinks he can do anything. Um, he, okay. These things are these things are something else, as you well know, Roger. I don't think they can be hunted and killed, and I don't, I don't know Steve's uh, view on that. But to me, it's uh, <laughs> I don't think these Bigfoot can be hunted and killed. Now the, the dog <laughs> men, I think there are at least two types of dog men, and one that are uh, being genetically engineered by the government there, you know, an underground base. Crazy as that sounds, that's what I believe. And I believe that the physical kind that they're making, I can actually kill one and uh, use it for an example to the others to not harm any more humans there. So that's why I'm down in the LBL. It's not to, it's not to get popular or make friends or anything like that, even though I made a, a lot of good friends down there. But uh, I give I give someone my word that I would do that if anything happened to him and he died a year later. So that's, I'm just trying to keep my word down there. But the LBL is uh, it's it's one of the most unique places in America. It's like paradise in the daytime, but at nighttime it's, mm -hmm. it's a whole different story. You know, you have yeah. so many things that can kill you there that don't have anything at all to do with humanoids. My scientist friend just took a couple pictures of. Uh, a timber but some timber rattlers down there now i'm telling you if you ever if you ever get out there you better keep in mind that these things exist and if you step on one it's going to be bad news for you especially if you're by yourself or or you have no cell phone signal which is 90 percent of that park you know there's no signal there so lots yeah. of ways to die in the lbl and doesn't have anything to do with dogmen or bigfoot or bat creatures or anything like that People just need to be aware when they go there and watch their children closely and their pets. Mm. We had a, uh, a couple of dogs get away from the owners down there. We were down there uh, a couple of weeks ago, and actually me and Martin was able to save the dogs. I thought they were dead. They'd been down there for three or four days already, and I thought for sure they'd already be 
uh, eaten by either dog men or Bigfoot. Bigfoot hates dogs. They really do. Believe it or not, I know that's true. You know, got coyotes down there that can kill the dogs, wolves. Lots of ways that, for dogs to uh, to die down there. But they got lucky and they happened to walk out in front of me and Bubba and Martin Groves and uh, got in touch with my scientist friend and we got the dogs back to their, their home in Paducah. Thanks to my scientist friend. So yeah, always love your children and your and your pets and yourself when you're walking through the LBL. And I have a question for the the ladies. Um, I was in uh, Gatlinburg and in Reagan Inn Resorts in room one hundred and ten uh, about two thousand and fifteen or so. My daughter was in there and I was awake. I worked third shift, so I woke up at three o'clock. And I wasn't really supposed to be asleep. It was the day we were leaving. And I, I've got the cover over me. And it's dark in the room. And I felt a thumb and a finger grab my big toe on my left side here. And it snatched my leg over. But my leg is under the cover and the cover doesn't move. And I come up ready to fight because I think somebody's done broke in the room and, and turned the lights on. There's nothing there. I have never, ever been touched, scratched pushed any of that stuff um that was so scary that that goes to another level and what i mean i don't know what the question is it's just like how in the world does something like that happen it happens a lot with any type of ghost hunting i mean more longer you do it i mean i can't even count on both hands how many times something like that's happened to me true story if it I yeah. And uh, you just you just never know. I mean, you might have been uh, what we say is your mind was opened up to accept um, it being there and it, it was attracted to to your vibration or something. And that's why it chose you. I mean, who knows? Mm -hmm. it, who knows? Absolutely. You know, it, we left my my daughter said, Daddy, why, why you got all the lights on? I said, we're going to leave early. <laughs> we're going to be those things, right? Sir, well, and Chris actually go looking for these things all the time, Roger, and it's I don't know where they get the the bravery to do that because yeah, I mean, you know, I live in long houses myself, and I will walk a country mile <laughs> out of my way just to not to walk in front of a haunted house, much less yeah, go in and, and try to interact with the ghosts and spirits in there. And I'm no, no, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> now I'm glad they I'm glad they do it. And I'll watch them do it, but I'm not, I'm going to be over here, you know, three, four yard, miles away or whatever. So, but uh, right. I've had things happen with my mom, Arlen, uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas. I didn't know the history. Oh, my, we one were at of the my Arlington. favorite places. Yeah. We, were, we, we just chose the Arlington because it was kind of cool looking. Yeah. We had been, we had been to the Diamond Crater State Park digging for diamonds. And we rolled in there, and I'm like, Mama, my mom was like, that looks cool. Let's let's stay there for one night. So we go in, and I'm watching. I turn the TV on, and it's on the SpongeBob is on. And I'm just letting it play for noise, and we're on the seventh floor. And we leave, and we go get something to eat. And the little girl was like, the waitress like, where y'all at? You know, and, and my mom jokingly said, because of the look, she said, I don't know. I think we're in the haunted the hotel. And she said, well. We're the Arlington, <laughs> and we're like, yeah. She said, well, as long as you're not on the seventh floor, you'll be okay. And that's where right. we're at. Well, when we walked back in, the it was October. I had it on SpongeBob, so it's some cartoon channel. When we walk in, there's a scary movie. I think it was Halloween was playing, and I didn't pick up on it at first. And I'm like, wait a minute, what channel showed both of those? You know, maybe there is a channel. But uh, a little later, we were getting ready, and the, they had the tile, the little one-inch tile, just intricate in the bathroom, and it uh, echoed. And so I'm sitting there texting a friend with my back towards the window, had my bum cap bill down, and I heard her laugh. This deep laugh, you know, and I'm like, I look up to see what she's laughing about. She's standing right beside me in that small room. So... Instead of saying, did you hear that? I want a confirmation. I said, I just played it off. I said, what are you laughing about? 
in her eyes, that was not me that's in the bathroom. The door was open and here I have to go in there. <laughs> There's nothing. Absolutely nothing. And uh, she slept. Well, I think she slept. She had the, the light on all night and uh, I slept good, but uh, she she didn't get any sleep. But uh, that was the one of the weirdest things because we're standing right there together. There's nobody around. And I heard it. It, it echoed. And um, I went out, even went out in the hall just to make sure. And I think we were the only ones on the seventh floor. But if y'all ever go, if y'all ever want to go somewhere to investigate, mm -hmm. I, would, I would definitely check that place out. Because the history there and some of the things that might have happened with the mob, yeah, yeah. it was wow. pretty wild. Yeah, no, I've, I've stayed in that hotel and I've got some really good um, evidence that's come out of there. I, I the, actually, Brandy has one of the best paranormal pictures of a ghost I've ever seen out of that hotel. Um, um, no, not at the Arlington. That was at the Crescent. That's oh, in Eureka. That's, it, it, that's in Eureka, but still, there. Are, it's it's not very far, really. Eureka and Hot Springs are not very far apart. And uh, that whole place, uh, that whole side of Arkansas is crazy. I'm yeah. <laughs> just saying, that whole <laughs> part is crazy. I don't care where you go. But the Arlington has some uh, really cool things going on, especially now that they're renovating um, they're, they're stirring up stuff. So yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff going down there. There was, there was some actual, actual doors that were sh nailed shut on our floor because yeah. people were leaving. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I'm yeah. sorry. I just had to ask, a, uh, I, I, you know, I've got y'all here and, uh, I've had this weird stuff happen to me and you really don't, there, there's nobody I can talk to really about it that knows. So it's just yes, yes, it's any kind. Just find people who, who you can mm -hmm. trust the answers from, right? Yep. I pretty exactly. you know, people ask me why do so many people not see things and just a very few people have experiences like we've had. And you know, I thought about that for a couple of decades. And the only thing that I can think of that makes any possible sense at all, other than some kind of some kind of random deal that which I doubt that very seriously, but uh -huh. I think the only answer is the people are, that see these things are chosen to see them because one day they're going to come out and they're going to tell people what the, what's happened to them. They're going to tell the truth and the whole truth, and they're going to help their fellow man by teaching them, right? Mm -hmm. That's all we can do. We could just have to sit here and tell the truth, and um, we really have no other power than that, right? We can't make anybody believe anything. We can't make anybody believe our stories, but we can tell them truthfully and, and give them the opportunity to learn or dismiss what we've said. So, mm -hmm. Well, you know, I could, I could sit here and say something, Barton, that, you know, I, that we could go this whole show and, and not get anything out of it, but I may say something that some of y'all may, it may help you, maybe a little piece of a puzzle that you're working on. Sure. You know, it gives you an idea. It may not be that what I said that helps, but it may give you an idea of the playoff of that. So that's why we need to discuss this stuff. Right. Um, it's hard to figure out on your own. I mean, I went mm -hmm. for years uh, with all this stuff uh, and and no nobody to lean on or ask questions. Uh, and it really helps. Uh, now, when YouTube and the Internet, all this come along, you can go look. You don't know who to trust, though. You know, right. it, it because there's a, there's a lot of people out there that um, full of it. <laughs> you know, that's, with, uh, that's, a, that's a good way to put it. Roger. <laughs> yeah, they're out here for clicks and subs and views and money and whatever. You know, I'm, I'm not out here for any of that. We're out here to tell the truth. And this is a platform that was given to me that. I never expected to have. So I'm trying, just trying to make the, the most of it right while I'm here. Um, I think we're doing the right thing by telling people our experiences and uh, giving them the opportunity to learn, right? So if anybody, if you guys out there have a question for Roger, uh, be sure and put it in caps so we can ask him. There are a we, few. We don't want anything to slip through. And we want think, to, I think he's already got some. So. Okay. And also the, the Super Chat is open in that. That's a way that you, you make sure that you don't, uh, that we don't miss your question. Uh -huh. So do we have any questions that that people have already? Yep. Give yep. them a couple of them. Let me go to the top. 
Fisher Spam asks, where is Roger located? I'm about 50 miles due south of Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. I'm in, um, if you look, it's called the, some people call it Dimple of the Universe, the Nashville Basin. I'm on the river system on the southern, and it goes all the way up and around the top of Nashville, maybe where, uh, close to where Martin Groves was born. <laughs> 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 but uh, he'll he'll know if you look on the map, you'll see that richism. And what I found out doing this is it's been a really active area, you know. Awesome. So, Hello, Fisher. Good to see you in the chat tonight, brother. Mm -hmm. uh, Martin was born in Franklin County, Kentucky. That's where Martin was. I mean, the Kentucky boy was actually for Letitia. Oh, and it okay. says. Uh, Letitia, you saw a bat-like creature? Question marks. Oh my! Yes, I did. We called it the Mini Moth Man. Moth Man. Seen it, um, the ladies that was with me was Anna from Jonestead's Farm and uh, yeah. Michelle from what's her name? Tells, Tells them the Nark side. Yep. Yeah. It was a crazy it night. It was quite a night, and I was there when they got back, and I yes, she was. They definitely saw something not normal. Mm -hmm. and that was the second carlo that, that went out to see, to uh, investigate and both of them come back with with sightings and me and Bubba were sitting at the camp enjoying the uh the company and he was there with the well, right and, and, and well so i say we was joining the company it was uh Krista and hollywood was there with us and mm -hmm. everybody decided to go out but us and we should have went out with them <laughs> right Krista? yeah we we definitely messed up didn't we yeah <laughs> we know that's all right. Everything's okay. still right there to see if you're lucky enough to see it. Well, I mean, if you think about it, though, it was kind of good that somebody stayed at camp because y'all was able to, you know, share the story of how you seen the moon compared to how we right. seen the moon. Yeah. Night. So, you know, it, it the makes the moon was another thing. They they went out and the moon automatically changed this. It was almost full, but it was small. You know, it wasn't anything spectacular. It was uh -uh. just a regular looking moon. But as soon as they went out, they all noted that the moon became huge and orange. Yeah, I mean, huge. Like, literally, whenever we went around that curve and that moon was there, it was like, we all gasped. And it was like you could just reach out and touch that moon. It was so big and so orange and so bright. It was just incredible. That's, incredible. that's so bizarre because Chris can tell you the moon never changed while he was at camp. Nope. It was about the size, I don't know, maybe it a quarter in the sky, right? And it was... Yeah. Uh, it was a pretty things. moon. It was a very pretty moon because, mm -hmm. uh, and the only reason I remember this that it sticks out was because Martin Groves was there with us, and he he made a comment about how bright it was. If you remember correctly, how bright was right. that? Yeah. It was not orange. What Letitia and Anna and Michelle and War and all of them saw. Yeah. So, all six all six people that left camp mm -hmm. that night saw a different moon than we were seeing in the camp so that's really really bizarre yeah you know there's so many things going on in the lbl they think it, a lot of people think it's just a big foot or just dog man but it's not it's really really uh complex yeah. there's a there's a complex uh system of unexplained phenomena going on in the same in that same just that one place and someone asked earlier if anyone has seen a portal there yeah that's and, one of the questions i have starred yep yes so that was uh, some brother Martin and Daryl both saw a portal there and something come out of it. So crazy place, man. It's uh, yeah. it's so, definitely somewhere that you want to be very careful in and yeah, the question. There. Yes. Yeah. Question there. It was uh, Regina Williams. All right. Yeah, Regina and Martin can tell you about that. Yes, and yeah. then. Um, Freaky Geek says, question, this vapor, could it have been a critter, real big one, moving fast? Like, take a, a big breath and let it go while in mid-jump, and that's all she seen was the vapor? Well, um, the distance that it that it covered, um, mm -hmm. Barton knows how wide that road is mm -hmm. and how wide the, the, the shoulder. It, it probably would have had to run a good 20 yards or better. And I would think in 20 yards with the bright headlights shining on it from about the same distance, 20, 25 yards, uh, she would have seen 
something more solid and uh that that's a but that's a good question because uh you have to look at all possibilities but i think the distance that it covered that um i don't know if that would have been possible or not and it was cold enough it was cold enough for but i've never seen uh that you know hide anything if something's if something's running and and it's and it's blowing it, it it's i've seen deer do it i've seen other animals do it it you see that in front of it and it will it will run through it but yeah i don't, I don't think the amount of volume it would take uh to come out to hide a whole dog mm-hmm. would be even scarier than seeing a vapor sure. <laughs> but yeah right to me it's um, odd that you described it as a vapor exactly something that you don't normally see right yeah and and i think you know where we would have we would have said something like cloaking or or the wavy the heat wave you know my son has explained when she said vapor she doesn't do this stuff y'all she does she hasn't been looking at all this first time we were in du bois wyoming we went back nine miles in the middle of nowhere and we we were coming back out and i we heard a, a an ohio how type thing but i heard it when i was younger you know maybe half a dozen times and you can feel it but out there it was so wide open in the mountains and she it was on her side of the truck and we were easing back it was beautiful beautiful place and um she turned to me and i was just grinning because she said did you just hear that i'm like yeah i heard it i said what do you think about it she said i think i've been watching too many of these shows with you (laughs) (laughs) And and to me, I'm not gonna say it was. It could have been some hunter, hiker, maybe messing with us. But uh, my game warden buddy said, "You got to realize, Roger, you're in these hills in Tennessee. It, it's not too far on the edge. When you're out there, it could have been a mile off, mm-hmm. you know. And so that sound's not gonna be as strong. You're not gonna probably feel it like you would here. So, um, but yeah, with her her description. I love it because I may be influenced a little bit because I've been learning these new words like uh, infrasound and stuff like that. She doesn't get into that. So when she describes it, it's pure of what she, her word, you know? Yeah. So when she said vapor, I knew what she was talking about, mm-hmm. but, uh, and I, I put that little gear shift in reverse <laughs> backing out, you know, because it was confirmation. Something was there. And like Barton said, we saw it maybe saw the same thing in two different ways or maybe it changed. Yeah. I don't know, but it, but I did go back and the we went and filmed a couple of days later, the angle that I remembered it running at, what, there was leaves disturbed that same way. It, it disappeared behind the tree, the two trees that I thought it did. And I could see the angle and I followed that angle out to the road and she was in the truck and I'm on video. I'm like, Hey, I'm, she doesn't know I'm about to do this. I'm going to get her attention. And then I'm going to see how close that vapor was to where I'm standing. That would put that angle right. Well, I went up and I said, it. you know, this is what I was doing. She said, I think it was a little farther behind you. So it could have been off a few feet, but it was the same angle almost, which is, I don't know if that's a confirmation or not. It's not proof, but uh, maybe it was the same entity or whatever. I don't know. I, I can't maybe tell you. Saw, maybe you saw exactly what it wanted you guys to see, right? That's a possibility. Right. Have, have, any, have any of y'all ever experienced missing time? I haven't. I well, yeah, really. But I, I'm, I lost half of the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> in there. I was singing in a band, yeah, but no. Uh, I haven't. Have you? Have I, you haven't, I think before? Krista has. Krista? No, I have not. Okay. Let's say, okay. So, but what have you? There are a lot of people, though, that have these encounters with yeah. these creatures, though, that do. I seen uh, Greg Ogles in chat, and I know he had a, a missing time, and it was with the Bigfoot. So, well, was me and two friends, uh, and I was probably about 18. They were a little bit older, and, you know, back, like I said, I grew up rural. So, on the weekends, it was that particular time of year where we were frog gigging and we we permission all these ponds and we'd stay out all night long. We would clean, we would clean frogs and, you know, get them ready for a, a 
fry. We'd have fish fry and frog legs or whatever. So that night we were hitting all these ponds and it was around midnight. We got to a, a particular pond and it was a pretty long walk straight down the road. We did our thing. One of my buddies almost drowned. Um, uh, somebody had cleaned the pond out. We didn't know it. And, and it, the bottom wasn't like it normally was. And he went under and the other one had to save him. Anyway, we were down there. What felt like about an hour, maybe 45 minutes. It wasn't long. There wasn't many frogs there. And we're coming back up the hill where the truck is parked on the top of the hill on the road. We got, we got to go through a gate. And as we get up there, I see a silhouette of a doe. It was beautiful. If I had a picture of it, it was just a doe standing in the field across the road there. And it took me a second. And I'm like, wait a minute. What time is it? The sun was coming up. Like, what time is it, guys? And I oh, know it's about, you know, whatever time. And I'm like, how long were we down there? Because we, we pulled in around midnight. We went down there five or six hours or whatever. And they're like, wait a minute. And I'm like, yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> Because, and that's the only, one of the, there was another time, but that one there, there was two witnesses um, that, and when it's happened, when it happened, if I probably, if that doe hadn't been there, we may not even have paid attention to it till, I don't know. It's just, why are we seeing this? Why is the sun coming up? It shouldn't be, it shouldn't have been that much time. So, can't confirm that, but with all the strange stuff, I've heard people talk about it. And, you know, I said, you know what? I think I've had a couple. And I've heard other people talk to me about uh, dense fogs coming in and getting turned around, disoriented. And then it'd be way later than they think it should be. So that's interesting to me also. I don't know where that would come from or how that would tie in, but it's um, it's a hard one to figure. Because mm -hmm. uh, I don't. There wasn't anything other than Mac almost drowning, uh, you know, having to dig the moss out of him. But uh, other than that, you know, it wasn't anything terrifying. It, I don't think. I don't, I don't remember anything. Yeah. Closest I've ever had anything like that is just, and I think everybody's experienced this, is you're driving somewhere and all of a sudden you're just there and you don't really remember driving there. Or how, mm -hmm. you know, you, have you ever had that happen? Oh, yeah. You're just driving, so and all of a sudden, too. you're just there, and you're like, <laughs> I don't remember passing that store and deals. Right? Yeah, I don't remember passing this place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I don't know if that's like losing time. It's just yes. like, not paying attention. Maybe just not paying attention. I don't know. Right. But yeah. It's kind of scary when that happens. You're yeah. Like, I've done that on the interstate. You know, you'll be 10 miles down the road, and you're like, you see a sign, you're like, how did I get here? And it is. It's you're thinking of some other things, you're on the automatic yeah. pilot. And, yeah, um, I, mean, like, I don't remember driving those last 20 miles. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that when that happens. And that may be getting old, too. Me and Barton, well, Letitia's not old, but me and Barton. Oh, yes, I am. Old. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> That's so. just one of the things that goes right first when you when you get old is, <laughs> is your memory, unfortunately. I panicked today. I was putting together a grill out here, and uh, it was getting dark. And I'm like, oh, no, was it seven or eight? Oh. <laughs> I, come in <laughs> like, I, com I completely lost. I didn't know what day it was. <laughs> hey, you have some more questions. Are you okay to answer okay. some more? Right? I'm fine. Yeah, That's far fine. away. If I don't know, I'll say I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Pamela Stefanich yeah. asked, uh, did it have wolf's paws when you talked about the, the white wolf? It had big, big feet. It, everything was um, oversized. Because, you know, coyotes, they're... I've seen all different sizes of coyotes. Uh, and another thing, too, as cold as it was, like a coyote would probably have its hair puffed out to keep warm. Mm -hmm. And this was this was a little more slender looking. Um, it didn't have puffy hair. Um, and in the, in the next day, the next morning on the way back, we saw a coyote about to ambush a, a, a wild turkey. And the turkey didn't know it was there. And we interrupted it. And it was, you know, in the 30s. And this coyote had this, that looks like a big coyote. I said, well, it's, it's, it's keeping warm. It's got its hair, you know, puffed out. Well, that's another thing. It did have big paws. And uh, it didn't have that coyote coat, I guess you would say. But, uh, and, and I didn't, it wasn't long hair. I mean, it wasn't hair hanging off of it. But I did the front paws. Uh, the reason I noticed those is when it picked them up and started around and, I mean, we're right on top of it at that point. So, uh, yeah, 
it had it had big wolf paws and it had it was just big yeah there's another question about the wolf that you saw um william asked did the wolf have a black nose for wolves wolves are white but black skin i don't i don't i don't remember i can't tell you on that um i didn't if it did, it would. If it had of, it was, should have stood out. But I think those eyes drew me in. That red was, and it was. And when I say glowing red, I mean it, they got bigger than it should have been. And also, on the way home, I'm like, well, maybe, maybe this truck was new to us. It's not a new truck, but it's got different headlights than what we're used to. I said, well, maybe these intense headlights would cause a little more eye shine. But there were seventy five to a hundred deer on the way home and all of their eyes was the same as they normally are. So why would they be a different than another animal? Um, but I can't remember any seeing black. Uh, and I, I, I would blame that on focusing on that weird uh, red shine. Right. Sure. Gotcha. Uh, Bart, it looks like this is for you. Uh, the eclipse truth asks, at Barton, do you believe that the dream realm could be us going into the second heaven? Many seem to be in their dreams. I have been lately the closer I draw to the Lord. Jenny, Jenny. Yeah, hi, Jenny, Jenny. Good to see you and Brother Joe in the, in the chat room tonight. Honestly, don't know. Uh, I'm not allowed to, to remember my dreams, right? So um, I know that the Holy Spirit can speak to you in your dreams, but uh, I'm pretty sure that Satan can can do that as well. So maybe it's better that I can't remember my dreams. But I don't know the answer to that question. I wish I did, hon. I would sure tell you if I knew. Yep. It's the scariest thing is that you remember your nightmares. Yeah, but only, you don't remember your dreams sometimes. I only remember the dreams if I take a nap. Now, when I take a nap during the day and wake up, I remember the dream. But at nighttime, I have no memory of of any dreams. So That's odd. Yeah. You know, that's me for you. That's a good, <laughs> a good word for me. Good word. I agree. I got to agree. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Just saying. I and mean, I know you pretty well, you know. <laughs> but we're all a little odd. That's why we all get along. Sure. There you go. I believe that also. <laughs> yep. I mean, y'all, to the people, there are, I see the people in chat that, you know, I've seen before, but the other people, um, I'm I'm glad I welcome the questions because I feel comfortable with y'all. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, ask away. Okay. Um, next question is Kate Webster. Thinking about Martin Groves getting sick again. Have you guys ever thought about taking radiation readings or EMF monitoring? Just throwing that into the hat, so to speak. No, I haven't. Honestly, no. Uh, have, I think that's a great idea. It might be a good idea, but. I've never come face to face with uh, a creature down there like Brother Martin has. Mm -hmm. So, well, even just like you know how how when you're out and you got that feeling of not being alone, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, watch. It might not hurt to have like an EMF meter or something. You know, we yeah. have them. I have one. Brandy has one. You know, bring it next time, and it wouldn't hurt to. You know, sure. And I know these things, these, these humanoids are radioactive. I know this because of the the, uh, the dead animals that they left all around our farm in our yard. You know, yeah, um, yeah. nothing would eat. The fly would even land on them. So it mm. takes forever for these things to decompose and they would be there for months and months. And we have a every day we drive by. I was going to say that. Yeah, go ahead. If, Tell if, them if everybody that. remembers a few episodes back, maybe maybe three or four episodes back i was talking about there being a dead coyote right it's coyote, yeah uh, down in the field uh, about a mile down the road from us and that coyote is still there, still there never been eaten by anything never been touched by anything it's still laying just like it was just dead That's and the, we we cannot figure that one out that's it, not normal it, 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 the bugs would have the bugs would have done more damage by now and you know, right. it's like it's just dead. So there is no dead piece of flesh that a fly won't land on and start laying its eggs on. Uh, That's why. So, so it's, and I've had 50 years to think about this. Someone just said, Doc, Dr. Melba Ketchum says they're radioactive as well. Well, I'm finally 
I'm glad people are finally starting to wake up because these are things I've been saying for a long time now, and it, it seems as if just now uh, people are starting to actually give more credence to what's, what the truth is instead of what they've been told by the TV and the television programs and the, all this fakery that's going on. My first experience with reality TV was 2009, and that's when I learned it was not reality. Mm-hmm. But it was a... Uh, it was just making a, a TV show. I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to tell anybody anything, give anybody any valid information or anything like that. So we're finally starting to wake up and realize that things are not as we've been told, and they're not as as they seem. And it's okay now to come out and tell people our stories, because you know they what are they going to do, Roger? If we tell somebody our story, they they can't eat us, right? Right. So, and 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 you reach a point where you don't even care and, and they could say negative things. And now, now that I've learned what I've learned, I've got my story out there. When I, somebody tries that, I feel sorry for them, for them really, because um, yeah. when it all does come out, they're the ones that may not be able to handle it. So. Exactly. And, and, and like I've always said that, you know, the times have changed. This is not 1975 anymore or 1980 where you risk everything by coming out and, and telling people that I, that you saw mm-hmm. something very, very strange that you couldn't identify, right? Because people would think you're crazy and you'd lose social standing and, mm-hmm. you know, your wife would want to divorce you and you'd lose your, your, your family. And, you know, it's just a crazy time. And I dealt with all that, you know, back in the 70s because 1975 is when all this stuff happened to me and my family in Spotsville, Kentucky. And I've seen people that have come out and told the truth and I've seen them, uh, and experience myself the ridicule factor and luckily for me i never really cared what people think of me right i've never taken the popular road or you'd see me on tv every night i've always taken the truthful road and that's the last thing anyone wants to hear so that the most hated man in any room is the man who speaks the truth so yep. that's what yep. we that's what we do roger and that's what you've done tonight we, we sure appreciate you coming here and telling everybody all this stuff man it's really oh, eye opening, right questions. it's been fun and just from sure. what you said i think we talked about this before uh i've down the road now and you see the bigfoot cutouts you go to walmart you have dr yes. Squat soap, uh, you have the stickers in the back windows and and i'm like you i'm like man i like to talk to those people but i don't want people to get beat up for walking in the yard you know but for, but big we cut out i'm like baby we should stop and go knock on the door <laughs> yeah say, what's up with that big foot cut out but yeah, yeah they're becoming more popular these days and yeah. he, got, mark's really wanting to go back to the house that he grew up in that was so haunted he, every ooh, time we drive oh, by yeah. he's like oh i just want to stop and talk to these people i just want to know i just want to know yeah i know I they're I drive by that same house I told y'all about, and I would like to talk to those people out in the road. I don't want to go in the yard, you know. If I could, and I, and with these hunting apps now, you can see who owns the properties and stuff. And yeah, I've been so tempted okay. to call the owner and just ask, "Hey, have you heard anything strange or whatever?" But I mean, I don't know. It's just I leave them be. Um, if if it's meant for me to find out, I guess it will. But. Maybe I'll get a little more uh, more brave. I'm but I just saw it. I'm gonna try to be braver, and I'm gonna next time I get a copy of one of my books, I'm gonna take it up to that house and introduce myself. There you go. I'll probably think I'm some wild ass hillbilly, right? <laughs> we tried that oh. one time. We was creek walking one time. Quick story, it's just funny, kind of. Yeah. Uh, we was creek walking, and we was wanting to walk this creek, and we always get permission from you know whoever mm-hmm. their house is sitting there or whatever. And we pull up the driveway to ask this, this guy if we can walk his creek. And he's out there and he's like, no, you can't walk my creek. And Bart's like, but uh, I'm just wanting to like, offer he's you going, a book, yeah, yeah, you know? he said, I'm not buying anything. Not I'm, not buying anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to said, give this to you. He said, I'm not trying to say, I just want to give you one of my books and just ask you, you know, can we walk? he goes, you guys need to be in church. Yeah. That's where you need to be. And I'm yeah. like, so, no. He said, not, inter- not interested. interested. You need to go to church. You should be in church. I'm headed to church right now. I'm like, wow, which church you go to? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the like. one I go to. Yeah. Uh, he, read, he read us the right act. But then the little old gentleman down the road that actually owned it, he was like, 
walk the pig all you want. So. Right. There you go. There you go. Roger actually has another question. Okay. Okay. Truthy Ruthie asked, have you ever investigated the Natchez Trail, which starts in Nashville South? Not investigated. Uh, I feel uh, I've always been drawn to that. It's not far from me. So I've one of my bucket list items was uh, to travel from one end to the other um, and get out at the rest areas and all that. And we did that uh, in uh, we did that in January of 21. But what I wasn't anticipating during COVID, all the bathrooms being shut down. So I got to see a lot of little towns, but there, that, that does draw me. I had, it, it does have a draw for me. Uh, Mr. Groves had invited me to go sometime with him to actually check out some places. And I would do that. Um, but with, with all the history of that place, um, I've heard a, I've heard a few stories and, you know, with, with the, with the mounds, the burial mounds, and all that, and the the history of that, and the and the, and how rural it is. I, I know there's some places where it's just right there. There's towns and whatever, but um, I've got some creepy feels at night driving that. So I love it. I love that that area. It's just a that's a road you can get on. Nobody is supposed to be speeding, and they usually don't. And just just chill, just relax and pull over at a rest area. And I love it, but I would, I, I would like to go. Mm -hmm. I would too. I would like to be part of that trip and maybe we can all get together and do it sometime. Chris Phoenix. Thanks for saying that. My friend, yep. I'm proud to call you my friend as well. You're a stand up guy. <laughs> well, thank you y'all. Yeah. Look, it's so, that's, it's so refreshing. The people, I first met y'all, uh, you know, it was a quick meeting. Uh, uh, Daryl and Mr. Groves and yeah, it, Texas. It was, uh, at the um, Gatlinburg conference. Yep. Oh, and I was telling, Gatlinburg Gatlinburg Gatlinburg. Gatlinburg. Yeah, okay. and I was telling them earlier that we would go listen to some of the speakers and maybe they weren't that interesting or whatever. And we would come back and talk to y'all, just hang out. And that was made it so much better of a trip that we had somebody you know, with Daryl and Martin that we're familiar with. We didn't know anybody. And then uh, Krista, I was close by when Renee refused to ran off like a little girl, a scared little girl. Didn't sign so up. You, you witnessed it too, huh? Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. the look on everybody's face was like, what just happened? Did she really <laughs> just say that. Yeah. <laughs> she did <Yeah>. say that. <laughs> <laughs> she dropped that but, in like it was a hot potato. Yep. Oh yeah. I remember that. Yep. And I saw y'all, y'all had talked about it later and I'm like, yeah, I was, I was there. I saw it. I saw it happen. Yeah. I wanted to but, blast her for that. But <laughs> you know, um, what I was saying is, is the, the, the amount of genuine people, there are different groups, but good people, I think gravitate towards each other. And uh, just with like with the meet and greet um, last week, it was, I told somebody jokingly that it was like a family reunion, except nobody was arguing. It was probably a little yeah. better. You know, we were all there meeting each other and uh, listening to stories and just there for the same reason. And my, my son's girlfriend was with us one night. She doesn't believe in it or she didn't believe in any of this stuff. And she, she scared of the dark, but she went with us one time. And uh, <laughs> oh, always, always fun, Mr. Martin. I appreciate you reaching out. He heard my he heard me on uh, Bigfoot Society. He had told his I think next and contacted me, and I, I was excited. I was like, "Oh yeah, this you know." So he, Mr. Grove, you were the first person to contact me uh, in this in this setting. So I appreciate it. Um, but like binds like, Roger. Yep. And, and can we do that? We have to stick together. Yep. And you know. Kenzie, I, I, so you're talking about feeling comfortable. Uh, so she won't talk about what happened to us that night. There was four of us, me, my, my wife, Kenzie, and Peyton, my son. We were there about three or four hours, had a fire going, uh, turned the recorders off, you know, I'm like just, nothing's happening tonight. And then it did. Uh, something stepped out in the field with us. It was one of the most horrible screams you've ever heard in your life. It was nothing. It almost sounded hum male human for the first half second. And then it wasn't. 
So she ran to the truck, locked Peyton out of the truck, and uh, she won't talk about it. But at that meet and greet, they came up, you know, Saturday. She was listening to everybody, watching us interact with each other, coming up, giving each other hugs. And she knew she was in a place where uh, she wouldn't be laughed at. Well, when Spencer yeah. walked up, I said, Kenzie, tell Spencer what you experienced or whatever. And she started it just coming out. And I'm like, wow, this is this is amazing because she won't talk about this. But she's it's coming out and she's talking about it and how terrifying it was and what it sounded like. And then she started giving her um, analyzing a little bit. And I'm, I'm sitting back thinking, this is amazing because this girl will not talk about this in Lewisburg. But she knew there that like minded people, she, she was OK with it. And when story time happened, she moved her seat over and listened to at the fire and listen to the guys. And I was, the whole trip was worth it just for that. Let to let her, cause I knew when she started gushing, it was what happened to me. I started gushing and it all started coming out. So I think she felt better and I could tell she was comfortable around all y'all and, and everybody that was there. So that was, that was fun to watch. Awesome. Well, we're all just real people, you know, and yeah. uh, you, I think you can tell the, the, the fake people from the real people and, mm -hmm. Down there at the meet and greet, you know, there was so many people, over 100 people there, but you know, I met a, met so many good people, but only a few kind of uh, gravitated towards me, right? And those are the ones that I pay special attention to because I, I feel it's the divine um, trying to guide us and lead us, you know. And it was, it was you and, and Heather and uh, Billy Schilling. Billy, oh, man. A lot of him. Yeah. Uh, Greg House. Yep. I really thought he was a great guy. I'm going to try to get back I'm back in touch with these people now that I'm back on Facebook. Uh, Spencer Jameson, you know, and uh, uh, Misty from uh, Woods Walkers. Right? Yep. All yep. such really good people. Um, so I pay attention to that. And, you know, there was maybe 80 or 90 people there that I didn't meet, but I met a lot of a lot of good people. And you guys were, were really – you know, I wasn't even planning on coming there, Roger. Uh, Martin had talked me into it. I just we just come out there for we've been in there two weeks, and I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta get home and gotta get back to work, you know. And uh, but you know, Bubba can talk me into just about anything, <laughs> uh, short of breaking the law. But uh, so I went down there. And, well, I wouldn't tell anybody about it if we did. Though. So yeah, we had a great time, man. It was great meeting you and and everybody else and. I know a lot of good things are going to come from it in the future as well. So, and like, you know, I'm going to use your channel to our uh, recommended channels. Uh, welcome you to the Inhumanoids family, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys grow with us. So, everybody, uh, once this show is over, please go to Squatch and Holler and subscribe, like, share his videos. If you like what you see, then uh, it's your job to make sure that you spread it around because there's not, there's not a lot of people like us on YouTube. So basically it's the ones in our channel recommendations. And that's all I know of. So just being truthful, you guys, please go support this man and, and his, uh, his, his endeavor on YouTube because it's, it's a very hard place to actually excel and uh, even exist sometimes. So, Please go do that. Now, Roger, do you have anything else that you want to add to your stories? Anything you might have uh, not mentioned that might be important to the, the people to know? There's, there's so many um, things. And I didn't have anything happen for like 35 years. And then we got reintroduced in 2020 with me and my son. And... At that point, I was a little more prepared, wasn't looking for anything. I was a little more prepared because of the trying to figure out what had happened to me years ago. And so I started recognizing right away that we might be in trouble and we had the rock thrown at us. And because uh, immediately, you know, it's something that has, has to have thumbs, you know, to throw a rock at you that size. So, um, no, I... I, here's what I'll do, I, what I'll say. I started my channel to learn, uh, and it's and, it, and I've done that. In the past year, uh, I've met so many great people, uh, but 
before you criticize somebody, get out and try it yourself and you'll, you'll see uh, how, how different people in your group that are, you know, one person that knows the animal sound, one person that knows, you know, snakes, one per whatever, and, and get yeah. out and enjoy yourself. Uh, and you'll see real quick. Um, it is dangerous. It can be dangerous, but it can be a lot of fun too. And sure. you will, you will learn a lot about yourself in certain situations and you don't have to go hiking Mount Everest to, to, to bump into something and you may not see anything, but here's what's going to, if you're on the couch now, I understand I, I've past year I've driven people with disabilities. I understand some people can't get out and I do this partly to bring, like y'all do to bring them along and let them, let them see what, what we see. And I would encourage you if you can get out to just get out in nature because yeah. ar around all these electronics and, and the distractions um, we weren't built for that. So to get closer to nature, God, your friends get away from this stuff. I have to do it. I'll have so many shows and I feel it. It's just, I got to get away. I've got to get outside. I've got, even if it's just sitting out back or whatever, but anyway, I want to thank everybody for the, for the past year. Welcome me in. I have friends in chat right here. Billy Schilling, you mentioned him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I and he, he, he's a good Christian guy. He's, you know, people pull up. He didn't know him. He was helping them unpack. He, he kept an eye on our stuff when we were gone and didn't ask for anything. He's just a great guy. And there's, there's a lot of great people in this. Um, and yes. I mean, I'm, I know I'm long winded, but I really mean thank you to everybody. And I thank y'all for having me on. Um, it's our pleasure, man. Our pleasure. Yeah. And y'all see me in chat. <laughs> you know, you know, and when I can, I mean, you know, a, a lot of times, a lot of times I'll just acknowledge, I'll say, hey, y'all, how y'all doing? If I'm doing something and I may have to go do something else and watch it later. But I love the chat. I love the questions. I, 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 uh, the people the people in chat make this worth doing. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. It's all about the people, brother. It's all about the people and trying to tell, to teach them the truth, you know. And yep. That's why I'm here. I don't, you know, it doesn't matter. Yep. Nothing else really matters, right? It's just this. That's this is why I'm here, and I'll be here for as long as the Lord wants me here, and then I'll be gone. But <laughs> Billy uh, Schilling said, "Thank you, Roger. Your check's in the mail." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How are you doing, Billy? Good to see you in chat, I'm man. Sorry, I'm that's a, that's a good man right there. <laughs> yes, he's a real good man. <laughs> like I say, uh, there's several people there that I really uh, thought a lot of, and he was one of them, and uh, Greg was another one. You know, Spencer Jameson and uh, you, of course, you and you and Heather. This just is great us, I was gonna say, Roger, just do us a favor next time. Just uh, holler, shout out to Brandy or I, and let us know when you do another one. And then uh, okay. Letitia too, because if we if we knew sooner, Letitia could have taken off. You know, Brandy could have, right. we could have made it. So, yep, we would have been there for sure. Yep, that would have been fun. I, uh, and, and what 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 was fun was I, I had interviewed people like Elijah. And other people, but I, you haven't really met in person. But you, you, you know, I've watched where they're y'all were out and and doing lives out in LBL. And as soon as I saw him, I, everybody when I would see people I'd interview, I would go like, "Hey, how's it going?" I was, it was, it was the Woodwalkers meet Greek. They included me in it, but Spencer said it best on one story night, and it was perfect. We didn't have this thing for y'all to come meet us. We had this for y'all. And that's the way it was. We were, I was all over the place. I would leave Billy and Heather would be, we'd be talking and I'd see Elijah. I'd, I'd take off him and leave him right there. Me too. Uh, uh, yeah. And Barton, come, you know, Hey, there's Barton and, and Martin. I'm going to take off and I'm going to come back. And Heather's like, you just left us here. I said, well, I'm sorry. It's going to happen all weekend. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> But That's I just wanted to say to me, I say, I'm I, you, know. Know, just, you know, these are great people. And every time I'm in a crowd, I'm I'm kind of pulled, you know, 40 different directions. But oh yeah, I love meeting the people. I love talking to people and and just spending it's some tough. time with them and getting to know them. That's uh, that's 
the most valuable thing to me is is meeting new friends okay. and making new friends and, and, and family, you know. So I got to give a shout out to War Criminal. I met him and uh, yeah. and he told me he, is. he told me some stories about where I saw the white wolf. About that's where he used to bow hunt and he doesn't hunt there anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So, There's something going on in that area. Yeah. War Definitely Criminal. the whole park. Hey, yep. cryptids, how are you? Yeah, and thanks to all my wolf brothers and sisters for, for coming here tonight. And thank you to everybody that, that's coming in this chat. And, and Brother Roger, we're going to let you go now. Uh, or you can hang out while we thank everybody for, hey, for the donations. Whatever you want to do, brother. But all right. It was good talking to you. I'm sure we'll be talking, you know, a lot more. Everybody that's ever come on my channel, they have my phone number. It's not like I just use their stories or whatever and forget about them. We're all yeah. friends. And, and most of us are brothers now, so uh, a lot of people think it's kind of weird when you call somebody your brother. But these are all my brothers in Christ right. and my sisters in Christ, and that's that's the way I look at it. And everyone that I've ever read an email message or sent me an email message or read on my channel, they all have my phone number. They're all programmed in my phone. They're all uh, good friends and good people, and I'm glad that you're one of them, Roger. Well, I appreciate it. And look. You and Martin, Letitia, whoever, uh, if y'all want to pick a spot and tell me to meet y'all somewhere on the trace, we're, I'm up for it. Okay. We'll do that sometime for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thanks again, Raj, and God bless you, man, and, and your wife and your family, and uh, keep you safe and healthy. Thank and you very much. I appreciate it. My friend. Thank you for being here. Thank yeah. you. Hey, it was thank, good to see you again. Thank, thank you, everybody in chat. I appreciate y'all being here. Okay. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> If you don't mind, we pull up our um, what we need to. Yep. Thank people. We need to thank, please. Thank you, Pork yeah. Chop Express. It says feels like Squatch Church. I can't read that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a very small print there. Feels like Squatch Church here, and I like it. Thank you all for all the positivity and light you shine here. You're welcome, Pork Chop. You never see any negativity on this channel. Thank you, Scott's yeah, Live. Thank you, Scott's Live. Larry Fisher, thank you so much. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate it, brother. Gary Spikes, thank you so much. Hello, Gary. I hear I you. Do it, man. Good person. That's another to one meet again. that I met again and <laughs> really got to spend a little time with. And he's just a super good guy. Love right? Gary. Love him. Sue Love G, him. thank you so much for the uh, memberships. We appreciate you yes, and hope you have you, a Sue safe G. and good night at work. Yes. Pop, thank you. We're sending, uh, he says, laughter is the best medicine. Right. We're sending you many, many prayers tonight. <laughs> Hope you get through the night okay, and just be careful out there, okay? All right. Thank you, Merle. Oh. Thank you. Appreciate you, brother. Liberty 1776, appreciate that. I've gained 25 subscribers just sitting there talking to you guys. Thank y'all so much. We well, we're going to grow together, and it's eventually we'll, we'll take over this place, and there'll be all truth and no, no smoke. There Fisher you go. Sam, thank you so much. Hello there, Fisher. Kate hey. Hunter, thank you so very much. Thank we you so much, you. Kate. And I'm behind on all of my comments and messages and all that stuff, especially messages. So please give me a little more time. Yeah. Be patient with me, please. James Aletto, read that. Martin, why do you feel safe with a bad than a high caliber firearm? Great show. I don't know. What, I think that must be a typo, but uh, <laughs> I feel safe with the only thing that really makes me feel safe is the protection of the good Lord Jesus Christ. So, uh, and who says I don't have a uh, firearm with me, right? I never said that. <laughs> I never say that I do either. So, thank you, Hunter 101014. Sorry, guys, I have a hard time seeing. Uh, thank you, Jenny. Jenny, we appreciate it. Read that. Fish and Bart. Pretend I'm there fanning you both. Oh, thank you, hon. We wish you were. <laughs> Rosie you. Girl, too. I'm sorry your air went out. Love you all. Joe says hi, too. God bless. God bless you and Brother Joe, too, Jenny. Jenny, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you, guys. That was at the end. That's the end. All, all right. righty. Well, so, everyone, thanks can again. I, can I say something real quick? Yes, you sure. can. So, here in about five minutes, um, Tex, Texas Front Porch, he's getting ready to go live. So, if everybody would hop over to Texas Front Porch yes. and um, catch Tex, and I think Monica Rawlings is on with him this evening. Okay. Okay. Yeah, cool. Everybody, if you're not 
you don't have to work tomorrow if you can stay up a little bit later. I know uh, Roger and I have to get up early and go to work. But if you have some time, please go to uh, Texas Front Porch mm -hmm. and check him out. He's a, he's a really good guy. Uh, just love him. Thank the world of him. Yep. And definitely do that. And make sure that you go to Squatch and Holler, Roger's channel, and show him some support and love. Mm -hmm. Blondes and booze. And blondes and booze and everyone else. And thank you so much, Chris, for being for coming back tonight. Yeah. Really miss you, you ladies. Missed you guys. I missed you really, really bad because last week I was an hour and a half behind in chat. I'm telling you, it's a chat to keep up with. You miss a lot. You yeah. really do. And we forgot that she forgot to put us backstage at, at the very beginning. Everybody was laughing, but they they seem to even like the mistakes. So we have a, a great group of people here and they're really Really something special. We, we yep. thank the world of you guys. Love you all. Yep. Much love to everybody and good night. Yes. Good night. God bless everyone. And just remember, you got some bad things coming up. Don't be scared. Be prepared. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the light. And no one escapes the truth. So uh, everyone be safe. We love you. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Central. Thank you so much for being here. Good night. Good night. Good night.